Okay, I am not uncomfortable. I feel like if you were going to give me COVID, you would have already given me COVID. <laughs> All right, cool. Mm -mm. I'm going to make sure my camera. What are we doing? Don't do that. Turn the camera on. Lovely. Recording. Nice. Okay. Oh, too much, too much, too much. That'll work. All right, so this is about, I would say maybe about five pounds of clay. Um, if you want a big plate, you're gonna wanna start with like a little more, but it's pretty squishy. Um, and especially if your hands, I know your hands are like, sometimes get sore, start with it a little wetter. Okay. Um, Cause if you start with like, ideally you would start with harder clay, but if you were to start with harder clay, it might like. Yeah, the clay I have. I bought from Gortman's and it's pretty hard. Is it? Yeah. yeah. I've been like saving the slip so I could <laughs> sandwich it in between slices. Yes. That is the way to do. Yeah, for sure. Oh, that is the one thing. So Laguna, who is the maker of your clay, mm -hmm. they like a hard clay. I don't know like what the plan is there, but they really do like prefer like a nice, really like it's like a hard cheese sort of yeah. situation okay so just like any other time you're gonna go ahead and just center as per usual <laughs> sometimes well that is not on your splash pan is not on okay and with bigger amounts of clay like this Unless you've got a lot of muscle behind it, um, work top down. So center this little part first, just the top half, till it's nice and good. Get a little moisture. Go, go the next level. Go back down. Keep doing that until it sort of evens out. Wipe your hands off. Then we're gonna tackle the bottom, and the bottom will always be the hardest part. And just do little bits at a time. Cause if you try to like really muscle it in in one go, unless you've already bought that built up body strength, it's gonna hurt you. This bat is just not, the splash paint is not, not having it today. Okay. I think that's pretty good. Okay. So for a plate, we want to center it like low and wide. So you're just going to do your karate chops. You might need to grab some water. In the meantime, um, I use the edge of my palm, but sometimes I'll like lean in with my base, and then sometimes I will just fully pull towards myself to sort of like just like with opening, but like without like actually pushing in. I just use it to sort of like flatten. That makes more sense because I've been using this and it's like made the clay weird. Yeah. It makes it hard to pull. It's getting the right shape is so difficult. So you got to keep your hands really firm. This hand is just for keeping it in check. This hand is for pushing down. If you try to push with both hands, it's going to look like really ugly. So, all right. 
We got a nice yellow air bubbles, but that's okay. Should have should have wedged a little longer. Okay. So just like with anything else, we're just gonna go ahead and open up a little bowl, and about that wide. You know, we just want to get it get enough so we can get in. And I'm actually not going to open down any farther um, just because I want to make sure I've got enough, like, material underneath. I, when doing a plate, like, if your plate is, like, this low, I wouldn't go down any farther than that. All right. So from there, we're going to pull towards us ever so slightly and start to curve your finger in a little bit. So that way we can build this nice ledge. I'm just gonna run my finger here. Um, with plates specifically, it's gonna be really important that you address the moisture in the center because you've got so much diameter here to mess up. If it is too wet, you will see those, you will see those cracks. So next step as always, we want to compress our rim and I'm actually going to compress. You see, I've got this sort of like spare tire situation right here. I'm actually going to just pull that up a little bit with my thumb ever so slightly while I'm compressing just till it meets the top of the rim. And that's going to like, I just pinch here and I just pull it up, okay. which sometimes you, we have that they happen, but this is, I just want those nice, even walls, you know, because straight up and down is ideal. Alrighty, so I'm just gonna pull this out a little more. I don't have a sponge because I'm foolish and didn't have my tools all set up before I started, but that's okay. That's okay. So just like with anything else, the first thing I want to do is I want to go up before I go out. Um with plates specifically, you don't want to go up too far because the farther it is from that base, the harder it is going to be to keep it from just like slumping all the way over. Because what we're going to do is we're going to push this to the side so that it way it sort of does like a nice like plate ledge. And I'm just going to very lightly, I'm not even pulling here, I'm just sort of evening out my walls. I had a little more material right here in the middle. Um, and I'm just going to straighten that out. And so at this point, it's not a bad bowl. It's a pretty nice little shallow bowl, but I don't want a bowl. I want a plate. So I'm going to grab my little rib here. Try to clean that off as much as possible. Make sure where you even go in to do this, that you've taken care of any detail work. At this point, take your skirt off. If you're ready to lay the rim over, take that skirt off because going in afterwards to take it off is gonna be very difficult and impossible sometimes. So if you take care of that bit now, it won't be an issue like here on the I wanna say the right. Everyone in that red bucket. You're looking for a wooden knife. Almost keep running off. I just need a wooden knife. So at this point, like I said, I'm gonna take off my get back on my seat. I'm gonna take off my my skirt. Because if I don't do this now, it'll be very, very difficult to do later. Because if I fold the rim over, I'm going to have to, like, navigate underneath. And, like, that's a pain in the butt. Yeah, save yourself. Save yourself some time and frustration. And do it now. Okay. So we're going to grab a little bit of water. Make sure it's nice and even on both sides. And I'm gonna take the flat end of my rib. If I want it to sort of curve, I'm gonna use the curve end, but I want to lay it flat. So we're gonna use the flat end. And very slowly, I'm gonna push it up against the edge here. 
and just gradually, very, very gradually, keep it spinning slowly. I am slowly, just ever so slightly, pushing it with my right hand just at the top and holding it firm in the middle. I'm gonna take a break because I got a rib full of slip. You wanna take that off because you don't take it off. It's gonna heck you up. And I'm gonna stop for a minute to sort of look at my profile. So it's nice and flat here, but it's curved like right in the center. So I'm going to now move my pressure to that center focal point instead of the edge, right? Take that curve out. I'm going to take a minute and just address the center. Now, this is not a bad plate. Like, if you guys were to say, oh, I don't think I can do anymore, this is a good plate. My teacher would call it a bowl, but he's not here, and I am not going to call it a bowl. This is not a bowl. This is a plate. I don't care, Jerry. It's a freaking plate. But I think I can go down a little farther. I'm going to do it. Because anything worth hard is worth doing, especially if it's going to pay off. So because I put my initial pressure towards the top and the middle already, I'm going to do my next set of pressures really focused here in the center. And if I have like a big chunk of slip like that, I'm going to go ahead and pull it off because it's only going to mess me up. Very, very, very ever so slightly. Just gonna fold that over. And that's a little flatter, it's not quite as like arched. And if I take care of the rim, that's a Jerry Austin acceptable plate. Um, I'm gonna make sure that I don't have any slip in the center. And if you don't have a sponge, you can always use a rib to take it off. It's a little more dangerous, but like, eh. What if that's the way, way you want to live your life? That's okay. Oops. Okay. Now, I keep doing, I keep just like, but at some point, especially with plates specifically, you have to just say, I'm done. Because <laughs> you're like, oh, I could maybe do like a little. No, no, be done. Just be done. Because, <laughs> like, if I were to keep pushing it, maybe I could get it a little flatter. But also, maybe I just push it all the way to the other direction. And that's not what I want. So, that's a pretty. That's a dinner plate. I think eight inches is about a salad plate. I'm not positive. I wish I had a, is there a ruler over there? Let's, let's give that a measure. There's a ruler. What was the right. minimum for the plate again? I think it's eight inches. But I might, I might reduce that because like, okay, so this is 11 inches. So a plate is about half. Like a third, two thirds of that. So it's a little doable. And like the thing is, if you center it like eight inches already, you've done it. All you've got to do is like pull it up a little and fold it over. So the trick here is centering it to an eight inch diameter from the get go. And that way everything else is just cake, 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 cake. cake. Do you feel, you feel buff? Yes, I always feel buff. Too buff for my own good. Do you want to see it again? So I'm happy to do it again. I've got more play. Yes, yes? okay. Would you, would you mind doing another demo for a hug? Yeah, I'll do a demo for a hug. It's like I still struggle so bad with the cup, or with the cylinder. Whatever demos you want to see, because like I want you to succeed. That's my that's my personal goal. 